Hi, I'm Ed Bacon, the rector of All Saints Church Pasadena. Whoever you are and wherever you find yourself on the journey of faith, I hope that you'll find something here that speaks to you. Welcome. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be aligned with your love, O God, our strength, our courage, and our freedom. Amen. So grateful for the Northwest Girl Choir and the All Saints Youth Chamber Choir for leading us in worship so far. Thank you very, very, very much. Before we began our worship, Charlene Crean, one of our deacons, told me that uh, she was in church one Sunday when it was this hot and there was no air conditioning. And the preacher got in the pulpit and said, It's hotter than this in hell. Amen. That's the sermon. (laughs) Since I don't believe in hell, we're going to have to have my sermon now. (laughs) Four years ago this month, June 2, 2009, in fact, the governing board of this church called the Vestry passed a resolution protesting the the approval of Proposition 8. That proposition sought to amend the California Constitution to state that only marriage between a man and a woman is valid or recognized in California. Just before the vestry action, the California Supreme Court had voted to uphold the constitutionality of Proposition 8. So the vestry noted in a resolution that Proposition 8 both deprived same-sex couples of the fundamental right to marry, but also placed at risk the state constitutional rights of all disfavored minorities. Upholding Proposition 8, in fact, had made the institution of civil marriage in the state of of California a tool of bigotry and apartheid a constitutionally mandated instrument of discrimination which advanced injustice and denied same-gender couples the fundamental dignities to which each human being is, is entitled. So after stating all of this, the vestry then moved to the conclusion of their reasoning. The vestry concluded that All Saints Church refuses in fact, is called not to be an instrument of any discriminatory system because to do so is inconsistent with Jesus' call to strive for justice and peace among all people and to respect the dignity of every human being. Furthermore, this church is called to make the sacrament of marriage equally available to all couples regardless of sexual orientation. So the vestry, wardens, and I took a stand four years ago that the clergy of this church would perform the sacrament of marriage for all couples, no matter their sexual orientation, but that the All Saints clergy would not act as agents of the state in its discriminatory practices. We would not sign legal marriage certificates as long as the right to marry was denied same-sex couples. During those four years, we have sacramentally married all couples who have come to us, but have asked male-female couples to go to the justice of the peace and have their legal ceremony held elsewhere and then come here for the sacramental marriage celebration. Those straight allies understood very quickly what was at stake and have complied throughout those four years. But, as of this past Wednesday's Supreme Court ruling, which effectively overturned Proposition 8, All Saints Church is now back in the marrying business for all couples.
What a day of celebration and gratitude. St. Paul says in this morning's epistle that the summary of the entire law of God, the whole kitten caboodle, is to love your neighbor as yourself. Your neighbor, according to Jesus, is not restricted to those who live in your zip code. Jesus taught us in the parable of the Good Samaritan that your neighbor is anyone on the margins, anyone who is suffering, anyone who is discriminated against, anyone the systems of this world exclude, impoverish, and put into harm's way. When you want to look at what love looks like, when taken to the public realm, look at justice and nonviolence and equality for all, A-L-L. Justice and equality for all is what love looks like when taken to the public realm. St. Paul this morning in the letter to the Galatians says that for freedom, for freedom Christ has set us free. So don't fall back into the slavery of unfreedom. Keep moving forward. The way to keep yourself free is to love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor and you will keep yourself free. I've been singing in my mind all week long that great hymn of the church written in the 1980s by Sting. If you love somebody, set them free. Free, free. Set them free. Sting is singing for God about divine love. Now I'm going to give you an example of someone who embodies what St. Paul and I and the Vestry Resolution are talking about. Congressperson John Lewis. You see, the Defense of Marriage Act was also overturned by the Supreme Court this past Wednesday. The Defense of Marriage Act, DOMA, federally defined marriage as only between a man and a woman. And after this week's DOMA decision, Representative Lewis, who had fought against DOMA, celebrated by saying it's better to love than to hate. This man is free, and he's not going to use his freedom to put anyone, including himself, back into the slavery of unfreedom. It's important to lift him up to invoke this principled stand against federal discrimination against LGBT sisters and brothers from Congressman Lewis, because he's an African-American legislator from Georgia, because he is the 73-year-old dean of the Georgia congressional delegation. And as a young man, he led the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC, and was the youngest speaker to address the march on Washington 50 years ago when Dr. King gave his I Have a Dream speech. John Lewis recently recalled that signal moment in the struggle from 1965. On March 7, a couple of years after the march on Washington, a group of us attempted to march from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama to dramatize to the nation that people wanted to register to vote. In Selma, Alabama in 1965, only 2.1% of blacks of voting age were registered to vote. The only place you could attempt to register was to go down to the county courthouse and you had to pass a so-called literacy test. And they would tell African-American people over and over again that they didn't or they couldn't pass the literacy test. What happened to those marchers as they tried to cross the Edmund Pettus Bridge into Selma has entered into the canon of American protest history. Lewis described it this way. We got to the top of the bridge. We saw a sea of blue Alabama state troopers. And we continued to walk. We came within hearing distance of the state troopers. And you saw these guys putting on their gas masks. And they came toward us, beating us with nightsticks and bullwhips, trampling us with horses. I was hit in the head by a state trooper with a nightstick. 
I had a concussion on the bridge. My legs went out from under me. I felt like I was going to die. I thought I saw death with a capital D. Lewis was one of 17 people seriously injured that day. He recovered, continued to struggle. Months later, because of that march, President Lyndon Johnson signed the Voting Rights Act into law. Throughout his career, John Lewis has forged a solid record of fighting for civil rights, not just for African Americans, but for all who suffered discrimination. Back when DOMA was being debated in 1996 with President Bill Clinton championing it and with bipartisan support in Congress, Congressman John Lewis of the state of Georgia spoke out against DOMA with what I think, and St. Paul calls the divine love that sets and keeps people free. Love on the public stage that is justice and inclusion for all. John Lewis said in 1996 on the floor of the House of Representatives, the Defense of Marriage Act is a slap in the face of the Declaration of Independence. It denies gay men and women the right of liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Marriage is a basic human right. You cannot tell people they cannot fall in love. I will not turn my back on another American. I will not oppress my fellow human being. I fought too hard and too long against discrimination based on race and color not to stand up against discrimination based on sexual orientation. But on the day before the Supreme Court overturned Proposition 8 and DOMA, the same Supreme Court gutted the Voting Rights Act for which Congressman Lewis had sacrificed having his head bashed in while demonstrating for equal voting rights. Congressman John Lewis said of Tuesday's decision, What the court did is stab the Voting Rights Act of 1965 in its very heart. It's a major setback. We may not have people being beaten today. Maybe they're not being denied the right to participate or to register to vote. They're not being chased by police dogs or trampled by horses, but in the 11 states of the old Confederacy, and even in some of the states outside of the South, there's been a systematic, deliberate attempt to take us back to another period. And after Wednesday's DOMA decision, Representative Lewis said, it's better to love than to hate. My friends, for freedom, God has set us free. Last week, freedom to marry was upheld, but freedom to vote was not. St. Paul is so clear that you and I are to be in this business of public works of love not just private valentines, so that we will advocate and be in solidarity with all who are unloved by the political and economic and war-making systems of this world. If you and I are in it for everyone, not just for our own tribe, not just for those who agree with us, but for everyone, We will be empowered by the Holy Spirit and we will know that it is the Spirit that leads us. If we're in it just for our group or just for our ideology or for our tribe, we will know it is our ego driving us, not the Spirit that is driving us. Today, President Obama is in Cape Town, South Africa. He is speaking at the same university where in 1966 Robert F. Kennedy delivered a speech in which there's a quotation that I have put into my soul as part of my holy scripture. And I hope that you would consider it with that kind of honor. 
Senator Kennedy said, it is from numberless diverse acts of courage and belief that human history is shaped. Each time a man or a woman stands up for an ideal or acts to improve the lot of other people or strikes out against injustice, he or she sends forth a tiny ripple of hope and crossing each other from a million different centers of energy and daring. Those ripples build a current which can sweep down the mightiest walls of oppression and resistance. I believe he concluded that in this generation, those with the courage to enter the moral conflict will find themselves with compassion in every corner of the world. After I went to Newtown, Connecticut, to talk with the uh, parents of children who had been slaughtered in that elementary school, a member of this parish came to me to talk about the murder of her own daughter. She said that she had uh, learned something very important. She and other parents who were in her stead had mounted a, a strategy to change legislation to protect people like her daughter. It took a long time. It was a long-haul process to get the laws changed. But they did. They were successful. And then they discovered that they had to keep going to Washington and exerting political pressure to make sure that the laws that had been acted were reinforced and that there was no regression. Let this past, let this past week be a signal to you and me that while our hearts are overjoyed at this wonderful two or three steps forward for justice when it comes to LBGT issues, that we took one regressive step back when it comes to racial equality. And to the degree that any of us ever rests about anything having to do with discrimination, that it is such that there will be regression after regression after regression. You and I are children of the Holy Ghost, of the Spirit, of God, which is the same as love. And every day we have to commit ourselves to being an agent of public works of love. Every Sunday morning I drive to church around 6 or 6.30 and I turn on KPFK, Sister Edna Tatum. She's spinning out great gospel hits, and they just warm my heart and get me ready to preach. And this morning, one of the songs was, Lord, I'm available to you. That may be one of the most important prayers any of us ever prays every morning. Lord, love, justice, equality. I'm available to you. Use me today because I know you want to turn the human race into the human family. Amen.